Revelation chapter 21, begin reading verse number 1. The Bible says, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. There shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you, Lord, for the good singing. Lord, our hearts have been touched and blessed. Lord, we're thankful, Lord, for a good Sunday school hour. We're thankful for a good report and what happened over at the jail this morning. God, we're thankful you're a good God that welcomes your children home. What a blessing. Lord, we're thankful that First John 1, 9 is in the Bible. We'll confess our sins. You're faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us uh, from all unrighteousness. Uh, God, we're glad you're a forgiving God, uh, a loving God, a merciful God, uh, a great God, and we bless your holy name. Uh, now, Father, for the next few minutes, I pray you'd put a hedge about us. Uh, I certainly do pray for a Holy Ghost conviction. Uh, I pray that, Lord, you'd manifest yourself. You'd step out from behind the shadows. Uh, reveal, uh, Lord, your will for each and every one in attendance this morning. Uh, God, I pray for that one that's lost. God, you'd convict them. Uh, show them their lostness. Show them their uh, uh, eternity without Christ. Uh, God, I pray today would be the day of their salvation. Uh, God, I pray for that one that's low. Uh, God, you'd lift them up. Uh, that one that's struggling, you'd help them along. Uh, that one that's seeking, they'd find. Uh, God, I pray that uh, uh, the reality of what Brother John just said a few minutes ago, Jesus is the answer. Uh, and I pray uh, uh, folks would come to that realization. Uh, God, I pray uh, not throughout the week, not Friday night, but I pray revival would break out around here this morning. Uh, we'd really enjoy the week if we'd allow you to be God in our hearts and lives even this morning. Uh, God, uh, I pray you just breathe on this place. Uh, get glory to your name. Uh, use this unworthy vessel, Father. We'll bless you for it. Uh, for it's in the wonderful and holy name of the Lord Jesus we ask these things. Uh, amen. Uh, amen. Uh, I was down there this week and thank you for praying for the meeting. God gave us a great meeting down there at Old Rugged Cross. Uh, and I was down there uh, and God began to speak to my heart in that hotel room. Uh, and God began to show me some things. Uh, and I, I want to give you what God showed me. Uh, uh, look at these verses. I want you to notice first of all uh, we who are saved, uh, we who are blood washed, uh, we whose names are written in the Lamb book of life. Uh, we're going to dwell uh, in the abode of God. Uh, look, if you will, in verse number three, uh, it said, and I heard a great voice uh, out of heaven saying, Behold, uh, the tabernacle of God is with men, uh, and he will dwell with him, them, uh, and they shall be his people, uh, and God himself shall be with them uh, and be their God. Uh, listen, I'm not looking for the man upstairs. Uh, I'm not looking for the upper taker. Uh, I'm not looking for Peter at the gate uh, or Gabriel or any other angel. Uh, I'm going to go dwell in the abode of God uh, with God himself. Uh, hey, uh, third Saturday night of March 1974, uh, he saved me. Uh, he put my name down in the Lamb's Book of Life, uh, and I've been a longing to go home. Uh, I've never been there, but it's my home, uh, and I'm a longing to see him. Uh, I've never seen him, but I know him, uh, and I'm a listening for his voice. Uh, Brother Tyler, I've never heard it, uh, but I know it. Uh, and oh, one of these days, uh, I'm going to dwell uh, 
with God himself uh, and I'll be in his glory forevermore. Uh, what a blessing. Uh, not only are we going to dwell in the abode of God, uh, but I want you to notice what's been abolished by God. Uh, look in verse number 4. Uh, the Bible says, And God shall wipe away all tears uh, from their eyes. Uh, there shall be no more death, uh, neither sorrow, uh, nor crying, uh, neither shall there be any more pain, uh, for the former things are passed away. Uh, hey, I've got good news. Uh, I, we're going to land uh, where there is no more heartaches. Uh, there is no more sickness. Uh, there is no more sorrow. Uh, there is no more sobbing. Uh, hey, there'll be no walkers over there. Uh, there'll be no wheelchairs over there. Uh, there'll be no base makers over there. Uh, there'll be no hearing aids over there. Uh, there'll be no eyeglasses over there. Uh, hey, we'll get a body fastened like the Son of God. Uh, we're going to be like him. Uh, for we shall see him as he is. Uh, and everything that hurts, uh, everything that brings me, Misery, uh, everything that brings pain, uh, God's going to do away with. Uh, and in chapter 22, verse 3, uh, he said there'll be no more curse, uh, no more sin, uh, no more wickedness, uh, no more ungodliness. Uh, everything's going to be beautiful, uh, and everything's going to be great, because uh, he's the great God of heaven. Uh, oh, I see what's going to be abolished by God. Uh, I want you to notice the adorned of God. Uh, look in verse number 9. Uh, the Bible says uh, and there came unto me one of the seven angels uh, which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues uh, and talk with me can you imagine angels are going to talk with us can you imagine that uh, uh, and he goes on to say saying come hither uh, and I'll show thee the bride uh, the lamb's wife uh, uh, what a blessing uh, uh, to think that God even thinks about us uh, let alone he'd be willing to die for us uh, let alone he'd be willing to pin down his word uh, let alone he'd bring the gospel to old Gentile dogs uh, uh, let alone he'd allow us uh, uh, the Oscar of the world uh, uh, to get saved by his grace uh, hey and in getting saved brother Mike uh, he should have made us servants uh, or slaves uh, and I'd be glad to be a slave of the master uh, but I'm not a slave uh, hey I got adopted into the family uh, got birthed into the family uh, and one of these days I'm going to get married into the family uh, and I've got good news uh, he said let me show you the adorn the bride uh, hey when there's a wedding going on uh, everybody stands to attention uh, and everybody looks at the bride as she comes down uh, and she's wearing a beautiful gown uh, got a veil on uh, uh, she's had her hair done uh, and her makeup done uh, Everybody talks about how beautiful she is. Uh, well, neighbor, hang on. Uh, Why do you see the bride of Christ? Uh, hey, when she's ushered in. Uh, hey, when you and I are adorned uh, in that white fine twine linen, which is the righteousness of the saints. Uh, and friends, when we've got his stamp of approval on us, uh, what a day uh, it's going to be and what a wedding it's going to be. Uh, I'd be able to be in the bride of Christ. Uh, we see the adorned of God. Now notice the attention to the city of God. Look at verse number 10. I'm going somewhere. Hang with me. Verse number 10 said, And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. And John goes on to give us some inklings of, are some glimpses uh, of what New Jerusalem's going to look like. Uh, now the Bible says uh, it hasn't even entered in the heart of man uh, what God hath prepared for them that love him. Uh, boy, you can go down over there, uh, uh, down Turkey Foot, uh, right before you get to Crestview, uh, and there's that big house. Uh, I mean, the fountain uh, is huge. Uh, the house is even bigger. Uh, and I mean, it's decked out and laid out. Uh, and Miss Mary, uh, I, I'll take people down to get something to eat. And I'll say, that's where I live, right there. Uh, they say, you do? Uh, hey, why would that amaze you? Uh, but I got to thinking, Brother Donald, that won't even be a doghouse in heaven. Uh, that's nothing compared to what God's went to prepare. Uh, hey, Brother Hallmark, Mikey, uh, 
He said that city's got 12 foundations. Uh, each one's a precious stone. Uh, hey, if my hillbilly math is right, uh, Brother John, them uh, uh, foundations are 18 miles high. Uh, each one of the foundations a mile and a half. Uh, a mile and a half of diamonds. Uh, a mile and a half of rubies. Uh, a mile and a half of sapphires. Uh, a mile and a half of emeralds. Uh, I mean, those precious things we long to get our hands on down here. Uh, we're going to walk all over them up there. Uh, uh, the streets are purest gold. Uh, hey, what a blessing. Uh, hey, the most vile thing we've got uh, in this world is asphalt, uh, and we drive on it. Uh, the most vile thing in heaven is purest gold. Uh, hey, uh, there's a mansion on the hilltop uh, with every one of our names on it. Uh, hey, over there, there's a crystal river. Uh, hey, over there, uh, there's a throne with lightnings and rainbows coming out of it. Uh, over there, the sun never sa uh, sets because uh, he's a shining forevermore. Uh, over there, be one eternal day. Uh, no more night. Uh, no more darkness. Uh, over there, to be a land of rejoicing and praise and worship. Uh, over there, it's going to be a wonderful place. Uh, hey, I bless the Lord. Uh, I really get to go. Hallelujah. But I want you to see who's absent from God. Look at verse number 8. The Bible says, but the fearful. Well, a lot of folks are afraid today. And the unbelieving. By the way, that's the only sin that will send you to hell. The sin of unbelief. And the abominable. And murderers. And whoremongers and sorcerers and un idolaters and all liars boy I wouldn't want to hang out with this crowd now let alone spend eternity with them he said all liars mm, shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone which is the second death you say preacher I don't believe in hell I don't care Jesus did he preached on it he had John write about it can I say there's something worse than hell? It's called the lake of fire. And those mentioned in verse number 8 will be absent from that wonderful place we refer to as heaven. I want to preach on this thought for just a few minutes this morning. I want to preach on heaven and why you're not going. Heaven and why you're not going. There's a lot of people, Brother Ray, got a head knowledge of Jesus Christ. Brother Ron, they believe he was a great man, he was a prophet, uh, 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 even believe he's a religious leader. It's not enough to believe in Jesus or believe that he was. The Bible says the devils believe and they fear and tremble. Right. A lot of people got a head knowledge. Uh, Brother Bob, you could attest to this. A lot of people sit in Baptist churches, uh, think they're saved, got a head knowledge. Uh, they've been baptized, they've shaken the preacher's hand, they attend, uh, but they've never been to Calvary. Mm. there's a lot of folks claiming they're going to heaven Matthew chapter number 7 Jesus said in that day there will be many come to him said didn't we prophesy in your name didn't we cast out demons in your name didn't we do many wonderful works in your name he said depart from me ye that worked iniquity I never knew you he said well I know who Jesus is the important thing is, is does he know you in the free pardon of sins heaven and why you're not going I'm going to say first of all you're not going because there was no conviction John chapter 8 verse number 8 says and again he stooped down and wrote on the ground you know the story there were men who caught a woman in the very act of adultery and brought her to Jesus and wanted Jesus to take the law and stone her now first of all I got a real problem with people lying in wait trying to catch somebody in the act of adultery that woman was set up I think Nancy Pelosi was behind it all, but that's a whole other story. But can I say that woman was caught in the act of adultery. They brought her before the Lord, and the Lord, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. Hmm? And the Bible goes on to say, and they which heard it. Now listen, he wrote on the ground. And then it says, and they which heard it. I've got news for you. He's written something down. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. When you hear what God says, uh, 
Something happens in your life. Uh, uh, the Bible says, uh, and they which heard it being convicted uh, by their own conscience went out one by one, uh, beginning at the eldest even unto the last. Uh, and my dear friends, uh, uh, your agenda changes uh, when you fall under conviction. Uh, your pointing the finger changes uh, when you realize it's you, it's you, it's you, and not somebody else. Uh, the Bible says in John 6, 44, uh, No man can come to me except the Father which hath sent me. Draw him, and I'll raise him up in the last days. Uh, uh, my dear friends, uh, there's a lot of folks says that they're Baptists, or a lot of folks says they're saved, uh, and they're not going to heaven uh, because they've never had conviction. This my darling wife sitting over there. She testified and sang a few minutes ago. I'll tell this story. We met, matter of fact, we drove by yesterday, the very church house we met in, in July 1987, at church, West Covington Baptist Church, having a revival meeting, and a mutual friend of ours brought her to meet me at that revival meeting. Listen, she wore a pretty light blue dress with flowers on it, a little hint of pink and lace on it. Hmm. I'll tell you this, that when she sat down next to me, it was me, her, and then the ugly guy that brought her. My Aunt Lynn thought I stole her from him. He never had a shot. <laughs> Brother John, that was the first time in all my days that a young lady was sitting next to me in church. She opened up her Bible when it was preaching time. She opened up a notebook. She took notes of what the preacher was saying. She'll testify to this if you ask her. 90% of all of our dates, we went to revival meetings. We'd go here preaching. If we wasn't here preaching, we'd go here singing. We'd find some church having a singing. We'd go here singing. And we'd go and we'd hear preaching. We'd hear singing. And God, who winks at our ignorance in the midst of all that, called me to preach. She didn't know that when she signed up for it, but it was too late. Uh... But I'll never forget, I lived up in Ohio. She lived here in Florence. One Sunday night, I got home from church, uh, and I was in my room. Mom come and told me, said, Annette's here. I'm thinking, what in the world? Why is Annette here? So uh, I went out of my room. I went and saw her. I said, well, well, what are you doing here? She said, there's something i got to tell you. I said, well, what do you got to tell me? She said, I got saved tonight. I said, I, said, I thought you was saved. She said, I did too. She said, when I was a little girl, somebody took me in a back room and showed me some things and told me to say yes to Sam and led me in a prayer. She said, but I never got under conviction until uh, I heard you preach and heard those preachers you know preach. Uh, and God convicted me. Uh, and tonight I got born again. Uh, and I want to tell you something. Uh, she had a clean life. Uh, she uh, went to church every time the doors were open. Uh, she took notes on the preacher. Uh, and I'm telling you tonight or this morning, uh, if she was lost, and on her way to hell. Uh, uh, how many others uh, said yes to some questions? Uh, I was led in a prayer, uh, but never had conviction fall on their soul. Amen. Billy Graham, at, toward the end of his life, said this, in all the campaigns and all the crusades and all the altar calls and all the people that came forward, he said maybe 2% really got born again. Mm telling you heaven's real but you're not going if you've never had conviction can I say well, not only because there's no conviction you're not going because there was no contrition Luke 13 3 says I tell you nay but except ye repent ye shall all likewise perish I want to tell you something when God convicts you of your sin and shows you you're lost and shows you he died for your sin it does something to you and when you come to the Lord Jesus, you don't come popping bubble gum. Uh, you don't come skipping down the aisle and go back out the same way you came. Uh, hey, it does something to you. Uh, it causes a, a, a godly sorrow in your soul. Uh, and you're willing to repent and turn from your sin uh, and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, there's brokenness that happens to you uh, when you get born again. Uh, uh, my dear friends, uh, if there was no brokenness, uh, if there was no sorrow, Sorrow for your sins. Uh, I do some checking up. I doubt you're going to heaven. Now listen, God made us people of emotion. 
We're not saved by our feelings, but there's some feelings comes along with being saved. But I want to tell you something. I've seen people get saved and they break out in joy. I've seen people get saved and they shout. I've seen get people get saved and they bawl their eyes out. All I know is when Jesus uh, uh, walks into your soul and you get sealed by the Holy Ghost of God, there's something comes over you. Mm. Evan, you're not going if there's no conviction. You're not going if there's no contrition. There, you're not going if there's no conversion. Acts 16, 31. And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thyself, or in thy house. Listen, he didn't say believe in the Lord. He said believe on the Lord. That means you come to the realization that he's your only means of salvation, and you believe on him. You trust him as your Lord and Savior. Romans 10, 13, Brother James, verse, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Jesus died for whosoever will. But can I say there will be conversion. You will quit believing in everything else and believe on the Lord. It takes repentance and faith to be saved, friend. If you've not had that, you're not going to heaven. Heaven, and why you're not going? There's no conviction, no contrition, no conversion. Listen to me, listen to me well on this point. I'm almost done. You're not going to heaven because there's no change. 2 Corinthians 5, 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. I want to tell you something. Listen to me. I do all the dope I want to do. I drink all the booze that I want to drink. I do all the carousing around I want to do. I listen to all the contemporary Christian music I want to listen to. I just don't do any of that stuff. Because when I got saved, Jesus changed my want tos. Mm -mm. See, there'd be a change in your life. Hey, I had a drug problem before I got saved, Brother Josh. I was drugged to church every Sunday morning, every Sunday night, every Wednesday night, and every Saturday night. We had church on Saturday night. Mm -mm. Y'all know I was a big ball player. I didn't miss church for ball. There were times I came to church on Saturday night in my ball uniform, smelling like a mess, but I was at church. That's the way it was. I want to tell you something. I'm sitting there. My grandpa preaching. I tuned him out. Didn't know what he was preaching about. Didn't really care. I was waiting for time to get over so I could go back playing ball. Mm -mm. There were certain songs in that old red back songbook I couldn't stand. I hated when they sang Press Along, Weary Pilgrim, Press On. That was two, two pages, four verses. It was slow, and it took forever to sing it. I hated that song. I hated farther along. I thought, will this ever get along and get over this song? I didn't like that stuff. huh? Listen, I wanted to go hear the Eagles. Mm -mm. Thank you. Got one Eagles fan back here. Hallelujah. Huh? But that night I got saved. Those things I used to hate, I started loving. I love that press along, weary pilgrim, press on. I love that farther along we'll know all about it. Are you listening? And I loved hearing my granddaddy preach. Are you listening? Uh, I love hearing preaching. I love hearing godly singing. I love it. Uh, I said earlier, I didn't come to get out. I come to get in. God changed my want-tos. Uh, I want the things of God. Listen, uh, it's not bondage being saved. It's liberty being saved. Uh, it's a joy unspeakable and full of glory being saved. Uh, I'm glad I can testify the fact I've been born again. What a blessing. Some of you all got a profession, but you go back to the same lifestyle you supposedly got saved from. Listen, I learned a long time ago, if it looks like a duck, if it has a bill, has web feet, has feather, and quacks like a duck, it's a duck. Mm -mm. Listen, you can tell me you're saved all you want to, but if you lie like a, 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 a car salesman, if you, if you cuss like a sailor, if you whoremonger and carouse around like a whoremonger, you're not saved. Hmm? Uh, listen, the Holy Ghost don't let me act like that. Why would he let you act like that? Uh, listen, if you read your Bible and say, I don't get anything out of it, it's because you don't know the author. Hmm? Hey, Brother Ray sitting right there. His daddy, Brother Sherman, 
couldn't even read when he got saved. He learned to read, reading the Bible. He reads the Bible every day. Hmm? Uh, don't tell me you can't understand it. It's just because you don't know the author. Hmm? There's not been a change in your life. Uh, those things that the world embraces, you should run from. The Bible says be a friend of the world in enmity with God. I don't want to be the enemy of God. I want to be a friend of God. Be the enemy of the world. You're not going to heaven, friend. You can try and talk yourself into it all you want to. You're living like the swine. You're of the swine. I said, preach, that's not very nice. Well, you're welcome. It's true. Last point, I'm done. You're not going to heaven because you won't be candid. You won't be honest. You're trying to fool everybody in this building and you're trying to fool God. There's only one problem. You can't fool God. He knows the, your thoughts and the intents of your heart. You don't even know your heart. It's deceitfully wicked. No man knoweth it. But God knows your heart. He knows the number of the hairs on your head. He knows where you were yesterday. He knows where you were a week ago. He knows where you are today. And He knows where you're going to be tomorrow. You're not fooling God. You need to be honest with God today. Some of you saved, but you haven't prayed for this meeting. You hadn't gotten close to God during the, uh, uh, the weeks leading up to this. I mean, if you're serious about revival meeting, how come you weren't here for prayer meeting last night? But Josh called for prayer meeting last night. Asked folks to come out and pray for revival. Thank God for those that did. But you haven't got into this meeting, this singing this morning. We should have kicked the walls out, and I shouldn't even got a chance to preach. You're going through the motions because you've been so involved in the world. And I'm not talking about worldliness. I'm talking about living and, and making a living and working your job and cutting your grass and doing all that stuff. All your mind's been on things of the world, not on the Lord. During the altar call, you ought to get in this altar and get right. There's lost people here, and you might be a hindrance to them getting born again. The Holy Ghost can't get to them and convict them because you're in the way. You ought to get right with God today. But sinner friend, listen to me. Jesus loves you. He died for you. He gave me this message on Tuesday down in wherever I was, Shelby, North Carolina. He allowed you to be here this morning to hear about some of the splendors of heaven let you hear this good singing he's trying to let you know he loves you and you can go to heaven but you got to go by the way of the cross he said I am the way the truth and life no man cometh unto the father but by me and sinner friend he wants to save you he wants you to quit living a lie he wants you to get born again today <coughs> Christian friend he wants sin revival Oh, my Sunday school class, I don't share much what I, I pray for. Scare some of you death. I'm not praying for good meeting. I'm praying for a reckoning. I'm praying for such a move of God that they start closing the bars. That the drug dealers got to go somewhere else because nobody's buying their dope anymore. So the judges over at the courthouse sit there and twiddle their thumbs because there's nobody coming before them anymore because everybody's getting born again. Are you listening? I'm talking about such a meeting that the schools invite us in to preach to the kids. I'm talking about, I'm praying that God moves this thing, it gets a big, God moves this thing to an arena because of so many people wanting to come hear the gospel. That's what I'm praying for. Some of y'all act like you're going to endure revival. I'm praying we get a revival. When was the last time you did business with God, Christian friend? I'm talking about grab hold of the horns of the altar and stay there until God moved in your soul. Huh? When was the last time you, you talked to God more than anybody else? God help us. Heaven's in view, friends. If you look around this world and can't see something's up, something's wrong with you. Heaven's just in view. Are you going? Can you go back to a place where not because other people were making a profession or not because somebody else got baptized or not because somebody said, let's go get saved. 
Can you go back to a time when the Holy Ghost of God showed you you was lost? And under that conviction, you came and repented and believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. Can you go back to a time? If you can, I'd make, I'd make, uh, I, I'd jump over everybody in here to get to an altar and trust the Lord Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. Minute, we're going to have an invitation. We invite you to come. We'll get somebody, or I'll take a Bible, show you how to be saved. I wouldn't leave here lost today. Christian friend, I wouldn't leave here not revived today. I'd get in this altar and ask God to do something in your heart today. And no telling what God will do in the days to come. Miss Renee, why don't you come to the piano? Brother Clint, come get a song. Folks are already coming. If you're here today and you're not saved, the Bible says, Harden not your heart as in the day of provocation. Today is the day of salvation. Why don't you come? We'll get somebody to show you how to be saved. I wouldn't trust in a piece of paper. I trust in the Lord. If you don't know Him, you can today. Let's all stand there picking out a song. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we bless you. Thank you for the way of salvation. You made it so simple. Even a child could understand. <coughs> Father, thank you that you love the church and you gave yourself for it. God, thank you for the hope of revival. You want to revive your church. Lord, within a stone store here, there's people dying and going to hell. Lord, unless we have true revival, that's where they're going to end up. So, Father, I pray. I pray that everyone in this building this morning, when they leave, they can say they know heaven's their home. God, I pray for those that are lost. And Lord, there's lost people here. You wouldn't have me preach that message unless there were lost people here. Might be lost church members. Might be lost religious folks. Might be folks that's just dirty, rotten sinners. But Lord, you love sinners and you died for them. I pray the sweet Holy Ghost of God would convict them of their sin and draw them to an altar of repentance. God, I pray for true Holy Ghost conviction now. Moving this service, I pray for your people. Some of them aren't ready for revival. I pray that, Lord, they get right with God. I pray you do something tremendous in our midst this morning. We'll bless and praise you for it. Have your will and way, for it's in the wonderful name of Jesus we do pray. If you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.